everyone. Thank you for joining us online here at Destiny. If you haven't had a chance to visit our campus, we would love for you to come out to either our 930 or 1130 service on Sunday. But if you can't, you can always watch us online here at destinyokc.com. And while you're there, you can look up any past messages, see any of our upcoming events, and read pastor's blogs. Also, be sure to follow us on social media right here. And now, here's this week's message. It's just been a really great season for months that we have been in, in exploring the table of the Lord, what that looks like in our own uh, personal lives and in our relationships around us. Thank you, Derek. So glad you're here today. Welcome uh, everyone who's in our online campus. Welcome to Destiny Table New York and that crew. We just, um, it's interesting um, being connected now with families like that, but I just want to invite us locally, the, uh, the Destiny Table in New York, um, several of them are walking through some pretty intense challenges right now. So we just... Uh, pronounce a blessing in that direction. Why don't we just pray for them? Father, I just thank you for the relationships that you've established as we're exploring what the table is really all about. Suddenly there begins to be a, 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 an expression of family emerging in the state of New York. And Lord, we're just asking that your grace would be upon them, health to their bodies, wisdom to navigate through and walk through some complicated circumstances. And I thank you, Lord, that your your grace is more than enough in every circumstance we face. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Um, I had this last week somebody thank me for encouraging you to bring your Bible. And um, I want to continue to do that. I have one of the journaling Bibles that we have um, in the lobby in my hand here. And I, I shared at the event that we hosted the appreciation night that uh, you know I was encouraging everybody to bring your Bible and I brought my Bible to read from it and then I realized I have a hard time reading my Bible without my readers on and I don't want to put all my readers up here so I'm going to stay true to my enlarged font on my phone uh, but I, I want to encourage you to have your Bible and um, somebody this last week said they just Tracy and I met with them and, and the, the husband said Thank you so much for that encouragement. And this is what he said. It's changed my experience in coming to church. Because I'm marking things and noting things. And then I'm going back that week in my time of prayer and reading. And finding those places where something had been spoken. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you online or here. It um, would be great just to make a few notes in your Bible. Uh, so just encourage you in that as we walk that out. Also, I just want to thank the Lord what I'm going to say, um, you'll be excited about, and we'll give thanks to God, but we won't give thanks to God the way, um, I mean, we just don't have enough understanding to give thanks to God deeply enough. You know, we do this ministry called Whiz Kids, and every Thursday we um, bus in second graders from Crooked Oak Elementary School, and it's just a tremendous ministry. Um, these seven, eight-year-old children and Many of them can't read, uh, and we're tutoring them, helping them. And um, this last week, Lexi, our youngest daughter, um, had signed up to volunteer, and she came, and she experienced it as a tutor. And interesting, the first year we did it, she was with me in the second grade while I was tutoring a second grader, and now here she is in college tutoring. And she just came home so enriched by it. But the thing that was so profound is there were 11 children from Crooked Oak Elementary Nine of them gave their lives to Jesus this last week. It's just amazing. Come on, let's do just thank the Lord for that. It's just so phenomenal. <clears throat> so I'm just so thankful that we get to serve a role in introducing people to the eternal priorities of God that are revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to grow in that. That's why today what we want to do is just continue in our table talk, interaction, the table of the Lord, and what it means to understand we're really created for conversation with God and a deeper conversation with each other. So the title today is Deep Meaningful Conversation. And um, isn't it exciting, honestly, to think about the fact that God wants deep, 
meaningful conversation with you and with me. I mean, are you excited about that? That is just profound. Isn't that phenomenal? It's amazing. It's just like overwhelming when you think about it. God wants deep, meaningful conversation with you. Yet, we read in Psalms 139, this interesting text of Scripture, that says, before you speak a word, God knows what you're going to say. And before you think a thought, God knows what you're going to think. And so the origin of all the motives of your heart are clearly known by God. In other words, you can fool some of the people all the time. You can fool all of the people some of the time. But you can fool God no time ever. How many of you know? He knows more about you than you know about you. And so when we're having conversation with God, um, you just have to realize it's going to be deep, meaningful conversation. You're not going to be able to keep it surface if you're really listening and interacting with God. He's always going to go to the deeper layers. And so here's an illustration I was reflecting on this week, and I kind of wrote this down as one of those things that uh, has happened in my own life. And so, you know, something happens, an interaction takes place, and you get mad. Has anybody been mad before? Anybody just raise your hand? You're just angry at times. And so you get angry. Somebody did something, and they make you angry. And then you bring it to God, and, and you're having this deep, meaningful interaction with God, and you say, God, they made me angry. And so God, in deep, meaningful interaction, might say something like this. I hated that that happened to you. Why don't we talk about why you're so easily angered right now? Deep, meaningful conversation. I mean, there are these underlying motives that exist in our hearts. There's a script that's running behind the curtain of our soul that we are not even fully aware of, but God is fully aware of. And I am just personally so deeply challenged to explore this. How many of you know deep, meaningful conversations with God are going to cost you something? But not to have them will cost you something more. So it's very important in this season of time that we allow the Lord to really deal with us on a deeper, deeper level. God knows the motives and the secrets of our hearts, and God's conversation with God will always run deep. Are you still excited about deeper conversation with God? Uh, he's really wanting to address some of the things within us that maybe keep us from being healthy and whole the way he desires us to be. So take heart. Don't be discouraged. We spent an entire year focusing on this statement, and I want to remind you of it. Those of you who were here a few years back, uh, you will know it. It will come to mind, and you will think maybe of the whole focus so long that we took on this. But he who knows you the best loves you the most. He knows everything about you, and he loves you deeply. Not anyway. He loves you deeply. He knows everything about you. He who knows you the best loves you the most. There's something so exciting about being fully loved, isn't there? And there's something somewhat terrifying about being fully known. Yet God knows us the best, loves us the most, and wants to walk us into a deeper place of relationship with him. So I want us to look at uh, David, a man who walked with God, had interaction with God morning, noon, and night, constantly having this deep, meaningful conversation with the Lord. Uh, as we came out of worship, I read the text that I want to point to today and focus on. And I, as I read this again, we want to honor the Lord in the way that we're addressing his word. We're not using the Bible to point to ideas. We're really believing for the power, the transforming power of God's word in our lives. So allow something in you to um, somewhat spiritually digest what God's revealing in his word as we read scripture together. Psalms 63, 1 to 8. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. David is writing this in a desert region, by the way, running for his life. So he's likening his difficult circumstance to his prayer in this moment. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. It's in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Verse 2. 
So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory, because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. It's a beautiful expression of a man who was walking with God. In a time of turmoil and difficulty, he's crying out to God. He's aligning his dry, difficult season with being in a dry place, hungry and thirsty. He was probably thirsting in that moment physically, we would presume, just from the text that we're reading. But he's, he's something deep within him is crying out to God, and he's speaking of how he'll wake in the morning and bless the Lord and lift his hands and through the course of the day be in this interaction with God. And through the night when he wakes up in the watches of night, he's thirsting and longing for God. Uh, through this last night, I was a couple of times waking up, and I just thought about how many of you ever just woke up in the night and you were frustrated because you kept waking up in the night, right? That happens. How many of you think that maybe there are times you're waking up in the night because the Lord is wanting to have a meaningful interaction with you? Perhaps we can shift our attitude from just being angry that we're not getting sleep to be purposeful about the moment that we're coherent in, uh, in our bed. And just whisper his name, invite him, Lord, is this you? If it's not you, put me back to sleep. If it is you, what do you want to talk about? You know, I mean, just learning, do you understand? It's just a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of a conversational relationship with the Lord, just always open to whatever he may want to say, whatever he's desiring to do in that moment. Conversation with God should be our way of life. Do you agree with that? Conversation with God should be our way of life. All I'm talking about is prayer. But we've so over-spiritualized the term prayer I'm choosing to reference it as conversation with God. And here's the thing that we have to really understand. When we have a conversational relationship with God, prayer becomes our first response rather than our last resort. It's just our interaction with the Lord. It's the way we're walking out circumstances that we're facing. Every decision becomes a discussion. Some of what we talked about last week um, just walking through and understanding the presence of the Lord and the guidance of God. Uh, it was really a significant word I felt last week. Let's never confuse his silence for his absence because it's his presence that provides guidance. <laughs> you sense the presence of the Lord and you lean into that moment. You sense the presence of the Lord lifting and you step away from that moment. Never confuse silence for absence because his presence provides guidance. So just learning to walk with the Lord in this way where the decisions that we make or the discussions that we're having as we're listening to the Spirit of God, we're discussing and interacting with God as a decision-making expression. It's just the way we walk. So interesting when you think about this, but any meaningful conversation happens two ways. It always happens two ways. If you have a meaningful relationship, having a meaningful conversation, it's not just one way. What kind of relationship do you think that my wife Tracy and I would have if, number one, I never spoke to her. I just didn't talk to her. What's your relationship with God? I'm drawing a parallel here. What is your relationship with God? If I never talk to her, how many of you would agree that relationship is going to be limited at best, right? So what's your relationship with God? Do you take time to talk to the Lord? Or when I talk to my wife, if I'm not talking to her, but rather I'm just talking at her all the time, and I'm never listening to her heart, I'm never hearing what she wants to say, never paying attention to any of her input, what kind of relationship do you have with God? Are you a person that never talks to him, or are you a person that only talks at him, or are you learning what it is to have dialogue with God, where we actually are exploring table talk, recognizing we were actually created for conversation with God and conversation with each other? Martin Luther made this profound statement, to be a Christian without praying is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. 
And we've talked a lot about how prayer, uh, air is to the body, what prayer is to the spirit. And he's bringing an alignment here, and that's revealed in Scripture in unique ways, probably why he's pointing to it this way. But to be a Christian without praying is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. When you came to know Christ, the conversation uh, in your spirit, man, was awakened to have an interaction with God. Now, the devil doesn't really mind if we come to church. He does not want us to become the church. He doesn't mind if we come to church. He does not want us to become the church. If we can just get in the mindset of showing up and listening and just judging the speaker on the content and delivery, was it good this week, was it not good this week, we get our worship on and then we go on about our business and live real life and then next week we come to church. The devil doesn't mind if you come to church. He does not want you to become the church. When we come to church, our lives are enriched. Would you agree? It's great to see everybody. We encourage each other. Right now, captions online perhaps encouragements happening when you when you come in online someone says hey welcome glad you're here when we come to church and gather as the church our lives are enriched but when we become the church our world is enriched the world around us everywhere we go we're walking in the presence of God having this conversation this discussion with the Lord our God in the way we're even interacting with others Sometimes I find myself having a conversation with somebody and I'm paying more attention to what the Lord is revealing about that conversation than I am to what they are saying. Because many times we as human beings don't even know what we're talking about. And we think we do know what we're talking about because we're really sharing our heart. But something's going on behind the curtain of your soul that you may or may not even be fully aware of. And you and I actually have the power to discern by the Spirit of God the deeper issues that are going on when somebody's talking to us about something in their life. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. The Word made flesh came to awaken us to the purposes of God and ignite an interaction and a conversation as our way of life that will not only transform us but transform the world around us. That's what I'm trying to say. This walks out really well in our everyday lives. If we're willing just to learn to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. What is it like to cooperate with God everywhere we go in every circumstance that we face? What is that like? I think we can grow in that more. How many of you agree? We can grow in that more. Some of us might have an awareness of somewhat what that's like, but I just think that it's, we're not just here to preach a bunch of sermons and look into Scripture and, and evaluate you know, the religious duties that we have. We really are trying to become more of the sons and daughters that he's called us to become. We're lessening our reactions. We're deepening our response. We're paying attention to his presence. We're, we're, we're listening to his voice. We're following the favor of God everywhere we go noticing what God is up to in every circumstance that we face now one of one of my roles is to serve and you all know external elder of the house Steve Uppel from Wolverhampton England and one of my roles is to serve with him on an apostolic team for the all nations movement and um, I want to share something with you that we've been exposed to in that regard from uh, another nation of the world, an unusual perspective from, from Christians, Christianity that's not in the context that you and I know. And by the way, uh, Steve is going to be with us the, f the first weekend of March. So if you would just make a note, it's going to be a tremendous weekend where we gather together and that first Saturday in March is going to be our equipping Saturday morning, 9 to noon. So make an earmark. We're going to gather together and it's going to be three hours Saturday morning of worship, ministry, impartation. And uh, what he carries is really significant in this season of the church particularly, but he just carries a, a, a magnificent apostolic gift that awakens something in pastors and leaders and believers all over the world. It's a privilege that we'll have to be able to have him here. And so I want you to, to help me, and we'll prioritize that weekend particularly, but that Saturday morning is going to be a special time for all of us. How many of you know Christians in the East live very different lives than Christians in the West. I shared with you recently that I want us to explore and experience a little bit of what, um, you know, in times past, we've been the strong, powerful, wealthy Christian nation sending missionaries to the East, right? 
and there's a reversal that's taking place because now Christians and leaders in the East are starting to have compassion on Christians and leaders in the West. And the missionary endeavor is actually reversing where they're trying to come rescue us from our indulgent lifestyle that's distracted from the cross of Jesus Christ in many ways. Can I get a bigger amen than that? <laughs> it's a reality. And so I'm gonna, we're going to listen to one of those individuals that we're in relationship with in just a moment. But I want to kind of explain to you what's going on. Because what is it like to live a life that is in an absolute conversational relationship with God? Like he's in control, I'm not. I asked the question a few weeks ago. You know, what is it like to be led by the Spirit? Do we just go where we want, do what we want, spend money on what we want, invest time where we want, plan a future that we want, and then just ask God to bless it? Or are we paying attention to the Holy Spirit in every step of the way? There's a difference. Christians in the East have to listen to the Spirit of God or they may very well lose their life. And so here's an individual, just crazy what God has done, He's actually the interpreter for Brother Yun, the heavenly man, if you've ever read the book. Uh, they've both uh, m very much known horrific prison time. And uh, this individual, he, he pastors in China and he ministers in, consistently in Iran, both of which have governmental officials that will destroy you if you take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so here he is, he's traveled into Iran, and we're about to hear uh, the moment I'm describing to you, and he's going to pick up, and I want you to have context of what he's talking about. So he's in Iran, under the radar, interesting things took place as he was coming into the country, but he's standing there with these people that he's ministering for, and that he's shown to encourage, and, and his phone rings, and he can see the number on the phone, obviously, and it's a local number from this community right there in Iran. And nobody in Iran has his phone number. <laughs> like, nobody has his number, so whenever he's looking at this local number, he's concerned, rightfully so, why is somebody from this community all of a sudden having my phone number and calling me? And he goes to his friends, the pastors and leaders that are there, and he says, I'm getting a local call from, from the local community here. And they said, do not answer that. That could very well be hostile governmental officials trying to ping your phone to, to find your location. They'll come arrest us all. And from that moment, this is the continuation of his story to describe. It's about a two and a half minute video. So I decided to answer. So I said, hello. And a female voice said to me, excuse me, would you mind to come to this location in the city within one hour and we will come to pick you up? And then without saying any other words, she closed the phone. So I told to my team, I said, brothers, I got a call from a lady in the city. And she gave me an address to go to, and she asked me to be there within an hour. What do you think? And the brothers, the spiritual ones, uh, the warriors of God, they said, brother, don't go there. It's a trap. It's for sure the trap. I said, how can it be a trap? Because she doesn't know my number. I have to go and see what is there. So would you mind to bring me to that location, drop me off, and then you can go to safety? And if you don't hear back from me within four hours, call my wife overseas and let her know my mission in Iran has been extended. And she knows exactly what that means. We've been there before. So, uh, and they promised to do that. They dropped me off. They went back uh, to a safe location. I was standing in a busy intersection of uh, city center of Esfahan. A taxi arrived, and two people, a man and a woman, stepped out from the taxi. One took hold firmly from my hand here, and the other one this side, and they started to lead me towards a very dark alley. My, my spiritual eyes, I saw already, oh, this was a trap. They are bringing me to a police station straight away. But that wasn't the case. We stop by a high-rise building. We walk into that, uh, that uh, they, they called the, the phone downstairs to the third floor. And to my surprise, I heard 
on the, the, the door, uh, that telephone, the voice of the same woman that had called me to say, uh, and she opened the door, we walked to the third floor, and I stepped into a huge Muslim home. The living room was as big as half size of this uh, uh, congregation, this sal here. I'd never been in such a big uh, living room in my life. And the very moment we closed the door behind the mother of this Muslim family, she fell down on her knees and she burst it in tears and she said, I left Islam 16 years ago. Since that day, I have been praying to Isa to send somebody to me to show the way to a relationship with Jesus, with Isa. And this morning when I was praying, I saw a phone number on the wall in my living room, and I called that number. And just because you answered, I know that you know something about Isa. And within 10 minutes, she received the Lord Jesus Christ, and she was wonderfully born again. She stood up, and she said, I now belong to Isa. I want to be baptized. Come on. You know, I've been praying this week that something would be triggered within us to have faith and believe God for God encounters to take place in the people that we are in relationship with or the people that God wants us to be in relationship with. I remember when uh, I first became a Christian and a few of us were reading Power Evangelism by John Wimber and so many stories like this had happened. And we got up, all these college students, we got up and I took my guitar and we went down and stood on a dock on the water on a Saturday morning really early as the sun was coming up. There was another group of college students there and they had been there Friday night partying all night long waiting for the sun to come up. And it was so interesting because when we came down, the conversation and the interaction emerged into this meaningful expression of of why we were there and and we learned why they were there and one of those guys I really felt the Lord was just drawing him deeper and I I just started talking to him more intentionally more personally and I said man I'd love to just follow up with you and just see what the Lord may be doing in all this he said yeah yeah here's my number and he wrote he gave me his number and I wrote his number down on my my notepad that I had <laughs> a few days goes by and I called him and he answered the phone and as I started having a conversation with him, no joke, his, his explanation to me, his reaction to me was, are you playing some kind of joke? And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, I did not give you my correct number standing down there. I don't know if the Holy Spirit gave me spiritual dyslexia or what, but he gave the, wrong, the, he gave the numbers in the wrong format, and I wrote them down correctly. How many of you know God had his attention? Can I just say I'm believing for God to start to get the attention of some people that don't want to give him any attention, but because he loves them so deeply, he's going to draw their attention to him. They can have Saul of Tarsus encounters. Do you believe this? I believe God wants to take us into a deeper place of understanding. Come on, everyone is created for abundant life, to live a life of interaction with God, to live a life of conversation with God. God, their Father, is drawing their attention to Him. Come on, let's stand together. Jesus wants to have a deep, meaningful conversation with us all. A deep, meaningful conversation with us all. I want to ask you your action point this week. Is pray for people by name. Pray for people by name. I want you to make a list of people that you know really need to encounter God. They, they don't, maybe they've encountered church and it's turned them off. But if they encounter God, <laughs> it can really awaken something within their soul. Help them start to understand what it is to be a part of the imperfect family of God. 
God will always love you with a perfect love. We as a church will always love you with an imperfect love. We'll do the best we can, and we'll allow the Lord to be at work, but welcome to a state of family imperfection where your flaws don't put us off, so I hope our flaws won't put you off. Let's do this thing together and allow the Lord to have his way. And let's pray and let's believe God that there will be those that will really encounter the Lord. We just want to grow in understanding who he is. You know, we're going to take the first 40 days of 2022. Just start to kind of have it in your mind. Well, those 40 days will lead right up to that weekend when Steve Upple is going to be here. It's really interesting how it's all working out. We're going to conclude. We're going to invite you to, to pick something in those first 40 days of the year just to begin fasting and praying. That, you know, whatever that looks like for you. It might be a Daniel fast, but I want to ask you to devote those first 40 days really to just seeking the Lord, and I'll explain more about this, but we're going to have those first 40 days of focusing in, pressing into the Lord. I would invite you to come to 6 a.m. prayer on Tuesday, if possible, during those 40 days especially, where we're just engaging on a deeper level. The conclusion of those 40 days is going to be a night of worship, and the following week is going to be a weekend of ministry and impact with uh, Steve Upple and other pastors and leaders that will be coming as well. But it's, it's that Saturday morning is going to be such an equipping time. I just know the Lord wants to do something unique in this next season. Let's not treat it casually. Would you agree? Let's don't be casual about the extravagant love of the Lord. And as we just stand and say, Lord, we want to encounter you. We know this begins first with the cross of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just stand and say, Lord Jesus, you came, you lived, you died but you are risen from the grave. You are who you say you are. We need you to rescue us from our sins. We need you to rescue us from ourselves. Come on, if that's your prayer of agreement, let's give him celebration and praise. Jesus is Lord of our lives. We invite you, Lord. Take hold of every area of our way of thinking. We pray, Lord, you would take us into deep, meaningful conversation with you. And I pray, Lord, that this week specifically, there would be supernatural encounters with Jesus. Regardless of a person's beliefs, I pray, Father, for the individuals that are in our five-foot circle, that they would encounter you in a supernatural way. And we would be right there to simply be a part of the conversation you're desiring to have with individuals that we will love well, minister to effectively. Use us, we pray, Lord, mightily as we walk out your will, plan, and purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Boy, I want to encourage you. Connection is so very important connecting with the cross and laying down our lives, connecting with the church. We're going to walk through our Discover Destiny community group. If you're not connected, plugged in, you've not found your place, you're new to the church, um, then I would encourage you, fill out a connect card and let us know that you're interested in taking a step. This is not just about knowing Jesus, it's about walking out his plan. He came to build the church. So we want to figure out how to walk that out as effectively as possible. In the first 40 days, we'll all focus in our groups, community groups, on the same uh, discussion element. But there's a Discover Destiny community group that we'll be offering during that time for those of you that are stepping into a place of deeper involvement with what God's calling us to as a church family. Connection. How many know connection is so very important? So we also want to connect with you in a place of prayer. Just as we take a few moments in worship. Our elders are positioned uh, under the lights right behind the middle section here. Jim and Diana Howard, Jason and Heather Shiflett, Derek and Crystal Wilson, Ryan and Gina Perry, Dave and Lauren Fulford, Wade and Jennifer Moore. And we just want to be available as this, uh, as this time of worship will lend to maybe God's dealing with you in an area of your heart. Maybe you've just made a decision today that you're going to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a pretty big decision. It's not good for man to be alone. Let us connect with you. Let us pray with you. Let us walk that out. Let us put a Bible in your hand. Come on. Maybe there's somebody that's on your heart. You're believing God for a true encounter. A true encounter. 
Now let's call their name in prayer in agreement as we worship. We're going to take a few moments just in this assignment of worship to the Lord our God. If we can pray with you before we're dismissed, then if you'll just come back and let us uh, stand in agreement with you. But come on, let's take what the Lord's stirring in our heart right now. Let's bring it back to Him in worship. Lord, we honor you. We want to know more of the purpose of gathering as the body of Christ. We want to experience a deep, meaningful conversation with God. So Lord, we just bring our hope of all of that before you in this posture, in this place of worship, in Jesus' mighty name.